24 before 7 on this Tuesday. Another hot topic right now on everybody's lips, property tax. And this is one that came in the public space. The first mention of that was around 2009, if I'm not mistaken. And now it's coming up again. And it seems like all the systems are in place to rule it out and to give us some perspective and to really walk us through and to, to break it down for us in, uh, in its real, real terms. Uh, we have with us the past president of the JCC, that's the Joint Consultative Council. Um, and of course, he had special focus in the construction industry. Afra Raymond joins me in the blue shirt this morning. Okay, thank you. I thought it was great. Good morning. <laughs> and thanks for having me on the morning, bro. Indeed, I um, mean, listen, you know, this is a hot topic and this is on everybody's lips. And wasn't it like first mentioned in 2009? I think that was the first time we heard of this whole concept of property tax, right? Well, it's, it, it's something that comes and goes. Huh? It's, a, it's a perennial problem in these, or perennial issue in mm -hmm. these formerly colonized countries because it, it, it is, it's kind of viewed in a, from an oppressive frame of mind. Yeah. The government, I now get a piece of land or I now get a house. The government will get a tax fee. So, Trinidad and Tobago is not the only country that's had this sort of painful and controversial encounter with property tax. The most recent encounter, as you were saying, JW, was, was that it was during the 2009, the end of 2009. Mrs. Karen Nunes, the chair, was the Minister of Finance at that time. Mr. Manning was the Prime Minister, the late Mr. Manning, and they attempted to introduce a, a revised and a modern property tax. And, and that, that set of, of proposals is what we are still grappling with. What is it, 12 years later? So yes, the answer is about 2009, the modern iteration of it. And we're still grappling with it because the meaning of it is that we wanted to have a, a system that created up-to-date valuations of property that was based around the rental value of property and a system that was modern because the old system was really a kind of a, a kind of a book based system with those mm -hmm. big books where you write all the information a little bit like the virus when you yes. get the vaccine yeah yes where you yes. have the big book like the police station and now we want to have a modern system that is that is computerized that in fact can be administered to produce more revenue for the state that in fact requires a lot less manual input and you can have more accurate results and, and, and better services for the citizenry but I'll get into all of that as we go later on into the interview, you know? Of course. So just to summarize, I have been in support of a modernization and a revision of the property tax system since 2009. There are two or three significant issues with its problems, but by and large, I support it. How do we get people to come on board and to even listen to the conversations? Because once somebody hears tax, it's like, you know, you get mute, you, you press mute by the airlobe, you don't even want to listen. But there are major yes. countries in the world where some Trinis live and families, you know, we have family and cousins where they pay property tax across there. Um, yes. I know that obviously the big concern is for those who rent especially, if this property tax now is put onto the landlord, part of that will be transferred now, I would imagine, to the tenants, which could obviously see an increase in rent uh, folks who are landowners with nothing yet on the land and um, there's so many parts to this property tax so just break it down for us for the layman looking okay. in well, the most simple form sure sure let me just give, give a word to example yes so first of all what what you were dealing with is the prospect for the landlord to transfer the burden of the tax to the tenants and to increase rents and uh, where the market is soft at present, the market itself is there's a lot more supply than demand. I don't see that there's much prospect from fund landlords to do that. Because if you're doing that, tenants, tenants at this point in time actually have more of a choice than landlords, just to put it in very simple terms. Let me give a work example. A property that is a property that is renting for three thousand dollars a month. Yes. A rental value of property is three thousand dollars a month. $3,000 a month is uh, $36,000 a year. Yes. $36,000 a year is the annual rental value. That's what, that's what ARV means. The annual rental value has to be adjusted. This is, this is, a, this is a, 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 an imaginary flat somewhere, okay? Or imaginary house. The annual rental value has to be adjusted by 10%. So you take off 10%. To account for the fact 
that somebody will not collect that rent every month of every year. There'll be times when they would collect any rent, they place maybe under repair, they may not have a tenant. So, they, so they, you actually, by law, you take off 10%. So okay. you take off three thousand six hundred dollars. Okay. You have to thirty two thousand four hundred dollars a year is the annual taxable value. The annual taxable value of the property you are you are taking three three percent of that. Three percent of thirty two thousand four hundred dollars. Okay, is about nine hundred and sixty dollars, nine hundred and seventy dollars. Nine hundred and seventy dollars divided by twelve is eighty dollars a month. Hmm. You get me now? I understand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's just like one simple example in 30 seconds okay. of how it works. Okay, okay. So I am saying that, 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 that that's a simple model. I mean, I have, I have a lot of things worked out at AfroRiven.net on my website, examples for commercial and industrial and agricultural properties and so on. But that is a simple example of the equation for a residential property, which is what most of the concerned listeners and viewers would, would, want, to know, would want to hear about. What about the fines and penalties? Because we're hearing talk of the fine on, fines and penalties, and some seem to suggest that if somebody is inactive or, or uh, negligent for about five years, uh, their property or land can be taken. Isn't, is, is that accurate? Well, there are, there are provisions for property to be forfeited and sold and, and, and so on to the state if, if people don't, don't fulfill their obligations under the law. But I am... Uh, I am actually skeptical, JW, as the two things. I'm skeptical. I mean, those, those, those provisions, you're correct. Those provisions are in the law. But I'm skeptical about one, whether the property tax will actually get brought in, given that we have, it's extremely unpopular. We have a lot of other issues bubbling in the society. And we have a government that has not got a huge majority. The PNM won the election uh, in August last year with a narrow majority. Yes? Yes. So that's the first fact that the majority the PNM enjoys at the moment is narrow. So therefore, one has to be careful in that scenario how you spend your political capital. Secondly, history of the country and our history of compliance and, and ob obedience to good, to, to good order. I don't recall any cases in Trinidad and Tobago of anybody having gone to prison for not paying their taxes. I don't recall any cases in Finland and Tobago, despite all of the all of the concerns. I don't recall any cases in Finland and Tobago of any property having been sold because people didn't pay their taxes. And those laws about properties being sold if you don't pay your taxes, those have always been there. Those were there in the old system. They're not they're not laws that are being introduced for being introduced by Mr. Manning in 09. Those yep. provisions are always in the law. Any modern taxation system has that. But I'm saying that we as Australians and Tobagonians have never honored that part of the system. Okay. So I don't think that's a big issue to spend time on, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be spending our time on, to be fast. So Raymond, I want to find out, will this sure. property tax situation help mm -hmm. with the derelict buildings and those, as we say in layman terms, the eyesores that would be in an area for years, just yes, yes. dilapidated, a piece of bush just overgrown. Yes, yes. Would this, would this help in that regard with that, that kind of structure? Well, I am, I am actually extremely pleased that you have asked that question. Normally, when I come onto these sorts of shows, the hosts or the interviewers tend to just be fishing. This question actually shows a, 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 a serious a kind of a serious understanding of what this is about. You see, if you go to modern, advanced jurisdictions, the ones that we aspire to, and let us be frank, if you talk to 10 Trinidadians, Trinidadians and Tobagoans, about what they want Trinidad and Tobago to be like, what they want here to be like, what they want here to be less like, it is those places that most of them are talking about. Let us be very frank. Yeah. Let, let's not pretend anything. That's what people are talking about. But I'll tell you something. If you go to those places, whether it's London or New York or Miami or Atlanta or Toronto or Paris, when you go to those places, you would never go into a good area or a busy street and see a derelict property with a lot of vines and bush. No. Why is that? It's not because they're white and we're black, but that's not the reason. The reason is that in those places, the local government, and I'll come to that just now, the local government is largely funded by property tax. 
Therefore, the people in the local government, it is their business if they want to collect a salary to make sure every property is properly assessed and they collect taxes on every property. And they, and they review it. In Barbados, they review it every three years. So it's not a black and white question. Thanks for they that. They review it, which means that if you and your brother and your cousin inherit a house in Miami from some aunt who was up there and they died, and you all end up in an argument in court, which happens with family, mm -hmm. and you all can't agree, and only let Bush grow in place, and you stop paying the taxes, the city council in that part of, of Florida will just take the property and sell it. And somebody who wants it will fix it up, and they will never have that ISO problem. And you all will just get a check, and you all can argue about the check afterwards. Okay. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, we have perfectly good areas. We all know it's true. Whether it's Southern Main Road here, Eastern Main Road there, parts of Barrett area, Woodbrook, St. James, St. Augustine, we have a perfectly good street. And you have two or three ISOs on the street, and what has happened? Most times, the people have migrated, family can't agree. But because the tax is next to nothing, because it's next to nothing, they can leave it a rock. Yeah, and yeah. People don't really, and the local government doesn't really depend. And the money is so small, they don't really depend on it. Yeah. A slack situation has been allowed to grow up, just like yeah. the bush around the house. They leave it, they leave it a rut, you know? So, in fact, property taxes are very important trigger to prevent a certain type of urban decay. So, it's a very, it's a very, very good question you asked. So, thank you. Indeed, and you've put such an interesting spin and twist on it, you know, looking at it through different lens. My final question sure. to you, uh, do you think it is fair, this is something that can be progressive for Trinidad and Tobago, based on all which we, what we would have discussed this morning? Well, progressive is one of those terms that, that needs to be a little bit, let's, let, let's slice it a bit. If, if the property tax were, were one figure all the way through, it wouldn't be progressive, which is why Mrs. Thatcher had a big problem with the poll tax in England. She wanted to change one figure. So a rich man in a house, one man would have paid the same figure than a poor man in one man in a house. And that caused riots and uprising and so on. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, I explained, it would be based on rental value. So there's an element of progress there. And of course, there are other elements of progress that could be built into the system with higher rates for better grades of property, okay? But the main, one of the main things we need to get here, JW, is to understand that, in fact, property taxes are an important engine for local government funding. Under the old system, the system that existed up to 2009, the money that was raised in property tax went to the local authorities. It was about 15% of the expense of running a local authority was raised from property tax. It used to be called land that get tax the house rates. Mm -hmm. The new system, the one that we're discussing this morning, is one that makes, as far as I'm concerned, on that question, a backward step, because the new system is one in which all the money will go to the central government. Therefore, the little independence that was possible with local government, where local government had a portion of its money coming from its area, yes, so there's a connection between the citizens in the area, the property owners in the area, and the local government providing services in the area, and the property tax was the, was the manifestation of that connection. Okay. That has been destroyed because it's now going to be paid into the central government. That's a backward step. Before we wrap things up, uh, based on what we discussed this morning, the fair factor as it relates to property tax, and probably 30 seconds uh, before we take the break, uh, should it, I guess, with more dialogue, with more open discussions, with more research, that fear should probably not be associated because there is a general real fear, real fear concerning this property tax. 50 seconds. Well, I think, I think there's some real fear, but I also think that a certain amount of this is being whipped up by property owners who don't want the depth of their affairs to be exposed. I'll leave it like that for now. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for the candor. I mean, this was a most interesting discussion. And thank you. when we discuss it some more, I guess we could always uh, continue sure. with, the, with the discourse later on. Have a great one, thank and you'll you. be safe. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. All the best. Uh, we take a pause. We come back with the social media handles and the birthday brew. One of my real good friends celebrated his birthday yesterday. I forget clean, you know, but we will show, sort him out today with a belated birthday shout. You would guess who after the pause.